Rachel and Kirsten here. Um, today we're going to do a pond uh, for you uh, using an old sink and um, and Kirsty's expertise because she's done this before, haven't you? Did you use the sink as well? Or? I did, yeah. The Belfast sink that my uh, mother-in-law gifted me. So that was useful. So I'll show you. It's just out of shop, but I'll show you in a second um, the one that I managed to... I can't even remember where I got it from now, but um, I've collected... Uh, about eight years ago, I think it was. <laughs> and uh, Kirsty inspired me to get one done in the garden. Hopefully, we're going to inspire you. Um, so, we'll just uh, show you around the site. I'm just going to show you the sink, uh, the Belfast sink that I mentioned. Um, there we go. Um, and what I'm going to do is submerge it halfway so it's um, not too dangerous for when uh, Frankie's roaming around the garden. Uh, we're going to put it in this site here um, because it's mostly in shade. I think it's about 12 o'clock now, so it never gets sunny in this part of the garden. And um, that's better for uh, ponds. I think, I'm not really sure of the reason why. Maybe Kirsty can um, explain if you do know. Um, Probably just it gets too hot and also you, you'd evaporate a lot of the pond as well, wouldn't you, yeah. if it gets too hot a lot of the time? So, yeah, it's going to be in the shade over here. And I, let, I just want to show you um, what I used before a few years ago. It's basically a bucket submerged into the ground. Um, so you can use anything as long as it's watertight. So um, there's a washing up bowl there that Kirsty's just shown you now. Or anything, if you have a, an old plastic planter without any holes in the bottom, obviously. Uh, and that would be good as well. Um, but that pond that I showed you that's been there for about um, eight years, it's got two frogs living in it, so uh, that kind of just proves that no matter how small your pond, it still supports the wildlife. So, yeah, we'll crack on. Okay, so um, things that you're going to need are some gravel at the bottom of the pond, okay? So lots of invertebrates will come and live in the bottom and also to help support the plants that you're going to put in. The other thing you need to support the plants is a basket um, planter. So um, you might have other kinds of planters in the garden, but these are important to be a basket one so that they've got the holes in it around the edges so that any roots can spread out and obviously water can get to the plants. Do you use these that they come in? You might be able to use yeah. those, yeah, the ones that they come in, if they come in one. Sometimes the ones that I got delivered online didn't have any baskets with um. them, um, but if they come with baskets then that's brilliant. Um, you need some oxygenating plants and if you have a look online there are a, a ver various different ones but obviously you can ask for advice if you go to like an aquatic yeah. centre. I went to um, Shirley Aquatics and they're really helpful and reasonable there so uh, and it's not very far by Beckett's Farm so so that's not too far local. off. If um, you don't, if you don't um, have access to get any gravel you may have a really stony garden like mine and um, yet if you want to you can quite easily I think find find that much if you've got the time to to dig, dig it around, around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and different sizes as well so some some of the bigger um, pebbles and stones are going to be coming in useful as well aren't they yeah I got a few pebbles when I was at the beach so if anybody manages to get near the beach oh, on yes. a seaside visit you might want to put a few pebbles in your pocket um the trowels um, just for shaping the pond so initially when you dig it out you'll need to use the spades and yeah. forks to a nice big spade yeah and move the, the majority of it but when you get down to just trying to get it in sometimes it's hard to shape the corners so the trowel is useful for just shaping the corners so that when you get it in it will slot in nice and snug um, and we've got some gifted plants here as well so you might know other people have got ponds that might gift you some yeah, irises they are. That's a good idea. So if you do know anybody with a pond, they might have a few things that have... Um, this was some, from somebody's pond and they keep multiplying. So she every few um, few years she gives them away on free cycle. Mm, that's, that's a good place. idea. Um, the other thing is, is, if you're thinking of doing this, try and collect some rainwater. So if you've got a water butt, that's brilliant. If not, just leaving out like some pots or planters and allowing them to fill up with rainwater is is better than putting tap water into the pond because 
uh, a lot of the um, invertebrates won't like that because it's got some chemicals and things yeah. in. So chlorine and yeah, okay. so that's no good. But yeah, if you can get hold of some rainwater, that's really important as well. And then you can just let it fill up naturally. You want something in there just to start you off so your plants are happy. Yeah. So we'll get started, I think, and start digging. Yep. Okay, now we're going to start to uh, anything that we need inside the pond. So what do we need first then? Okay, so you're going to need some gravel. Okay. Um, it's better if you can get the gravel from uh, a source where you know it's clean. So that's why we've got this aquatic uh, gravel because we know that hasn't got any contaminants or anything um, and that yeah. won't harm any of the wildlife. But so if, we, you, if you used uh, stones from your garden like we discussed earlier, yeah. they'd be all right as well, yeah, wouldn't they? Yeah. Stones from your garden is fine. Yeah. It's just that if you've got anything sort of industrial, you wouldn't want to use that. So you need to put some of that in your basket. And yeah. then you can plant in that into the, yeah, into the sink. There's other plants as well that are already in the little baskets and they can just be dropped in as they are. But these big ones do will need a little bit of steadying. So putting a few stones over them so that they don't um, fall over too much. Mm -hmm. They can be arranged in that basket. And then you said to put a bit of soil over it as well? Yeah, just a little bit so they've got something little bit of nutrients, although they look like they've got some stuff there, mm. so they look too quite, bad. Quite pungy. I bet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Put that one on its own and see how it does. Or? Yeah, see how it goes on its own. experiment on its own over there. Because I've got enough. Stone, some gravel over it and I'll uh -huh. steady it. A bit so they don't float away when the time comes, it gets filled up. Okay. Right. And then the others can just go in in their little baskets. And if they get really big, because they're in baskets, you can just pull them out again and repop them into a bigger, a bigger version if you need to. But I think these will be fine for a while. So when I went to uh, Sholey Aquatics, I just asked for ones that are oxygenators. Mm -hmm. And I think it was four for so many pounds, like 10 pounds or 20 pounds. Um, so that's what these ones are. So they can go further. They can sit right on the bottom, can they? Yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. The ones that I've got are slightly, that are slightly different and they came with a little lead tag in them and you just throw them into the water and they, they literally float in the water and, and live in the water that way. Yeah. So, weirdly, they came in the post and, and survived. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> another, another mare's tail. We'll call that mare's tail. Common word, common name. Oh, that's red stemmed parrot's feather. Nice. Red stemmed parrot's feather. It looks like it's red stemmed for sure. And then. Hair grass. Looks Lovely. like hair grass. Yeah. It's the kind of thing you'd see by the, by the coast as well, isn't it? It's nice. Wa waxy, shiny uh, grasses. And then I've got a forget me not. Oh, oh you can't, sure you can't get that up for <laughs> Poor Kirsty's hurt her back. So. Um, Roll over this graph. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, so we've got water for getting the nut here, which is very nice. Yeah. To flower. I've got some of those in my pond and they are lovely. I might try and put that a little bit higher up so it doesn't get... Should I put some gravel underneath it? Can do. Don't give it a bit of height. The gravel over the plug as well, will that help stop it from leaking? Yeah, there? maybe. Time for the water. Yes, <laughs> of which there is 
Hardly uh, any. <laughs> it's rained for... Oh, it's, it's been really heavy rain for about two or three days. And I haven't collected any water. Or oh, well, the water that I have collected, Frankie um, has decided to pour out of the bucket. So, um, yeah, we're not going to fill it that much. We're going to hope for some more rain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we're going to fill it enough so that the plants will survive anyway, because we've got that much. Yes, we have got some from my pond. Okay, just so to finish this off then, I would put the rest of the gravel into the bottom, um, so that it covers the bottom as much as you can. And then gently add the water in, probably at one corner. Precious you, water. Yeah, you don't want to like stir up too much of the, the mud. Okay. So we'll just gently pop it in. And we've got your bottle of water there's as well. bottle there. Yep. So this is out of my pond. Got some insects in there as well. Yeah, it'll have some nice (laughs) microbes to start it off. Dry my shoulder. That's good. So it's it's covered the bottom, so everything's got a bit of a drink. Keep it going. And then I would leave out some some buckets or some tubs and things and let them fill up with rainwater and just keep popping it up and yeah. praying for rain. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I think we were talking about uh, possibly using some pebbles from the beach as well. Yeah, it's good to be able to have a, a point at which animals can crawl in but also crawl out. Um, so if you can have a few pebbles piled up maybe in one corner or you could put um, a log in there or a, a big stick in there. Some way of getting in and out is a good idea. So one of the last things to do is um, collect some larger stones and pebbles. If you're going to the beach, it would be a good idea to pick a few of those up. And you can arrange them around the edge of the outside of the pond. But also, you can put a few perhaps inside the pond. Um, and it en- enables things to crawl in and to crawl out. So you don't end up with any casualties in your pond. That happens with frogs, doesn't it? And I was quite surprised about that, that mm. they need um, a little beach, if you like, to be able to crawl in and out of. So think of stepping stones and, um, yeah, a little a little ledge or a beach, yeah. a beach area, isn't it? A mini staircase yeah. to get out. So they can go up here and then down there. And then down. Or you could also get like a large twig, yeah. stick, a bit of log. Just got this quarter of a brick here, which I'm going to put in the edge there. Anything that they can use to get in and out. And they'll also use any overhanging vegetation. So then the grass around the edge will start to grow again. That will be good too. Yeah. So that isn't much now, but I'm going to carry on um, gathering some stones. And it'll be quite a nice thing to do with Frankie as well. Um, Just to continue it. And uh, and it'll... It'll bed in and, and become more um, part of the garden like this one has. And uh, hopefully get some lovely moss. And um, other things just growing around it naturally. So yeah, uh, send us your videos or any questions that you've got. And Kirsty was going to do an information sheet. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in doing it themselves got a list of all the equipment that you'll need and some step-by-step instructions as well how to pick a pond and... <laughs> okay. okay take care bye, bye.